Okay, Minasan Kambawa. Watashi wa Steven Chen, uh, Director Oracle Technology Network. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Raspberry Pi um, and Java, Java 9. So who, who has a Raspberry Pi? Oh, very good. Um, who's tried Java 9? OK, few fewer hands, but you should, you should all try Java 9. It's coming out very soon. Um, see, some laughter. And Raspberry Pi um, is very inexpensive. So maybe about 4,000 yen. So I think most people can afford it. It's um, and a good way to get started with embedded development. Um, Takashi, do we have tape? Maybe. Tape. Oh, very good. And we also have stickers. So I need some help from volunteers. This is for you. Please pass out. So I need three volunteers to help me out with making a track using these two rolls of tape for the line followers. So we have a uh, white tape. This will be the, the highway. And we have black tape. This will be the line that it follows. So who, who would like to help me? Three, three volunteers. Oh, one, Kubo, <laughs> two, in the back, three. And um, you guys are the fastest, so you win. So do you, do you remember how this works, Kubo? OK. <laughs> Here. And you can build wherever you'd like. <laughs> Have fun. OK, and while they're building the track, I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology we'll be demonstrating. So Raspberry Pi is a very good platform to do embedded development. It has a display, USB, Ethernet, audio. But I think the most interesting thing on it is the GPIO pins. These let you hook up different sensors. Like you can hook up um, buttons, switches, relays, temperature sensors. Serial scales, RFID sensors, so anything in the physical world you can connect using these pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's very easy to do and it lets you do device automation. The Raspberry Pi is also very power efficient, so you can power it off of any 5 volt source, which has about an amp of power. So if you have a cell phone charger, or a small battery, you can run the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to specifically run Java 9 today on the Raspberry Pi. So one of the main features of Java 9 is modularity. This lets you take the entire JDK and split it up into small pieces that you can use. So you can just pick out the modules which your application depends upon rather than using the whole JDK. You can also split your own application up into modules. And then use this instead of the class path to specify dependencies between different parts of your application. The second feature which is very important for embedded development is the modular runtime images. So this lets you have a more efficient jar file format. 
which is good for small embedded devices. Also, the Java Linker, JLink, will let you build a self-contained application that includes all the modules your application depends upon and also includes all of the Java um, JDK dependencies. So you can include a um, scaled down version of the Java runtime with your application. So for embedded devices, this also is very good and it lets you make an executable that you can run specifically and deploy on the platform. Also, JShell is very useful for doing simple command executing, testing stuff out. You can do this right from the command line, type in simple Java commands, and then run them and test them easily. So this is available in a lot of different languages, like you know Ruby, um, Python, you know, most programming languages, you know, Lisp, all of these programming languages include some sort of REPL. Um, but for Java now, it's um, a standard feature and it makes it much easier to develop or um, test simple code on the command line. And finally, the new support for HTTP 2.0 is useful because a common use case, oh, so complicated. These guys are working hard. So um, HTTP2 is useful because it lets you um, use the new streaming interface, um, bi-directional communication between the browser and the server. Um, and it's a common use case to run um, web servers on the Raspberry Pi so you can have a simple way to configure it and interface with it if you're not using a user interface. So based upon what Raspberry Pi you're using, you should use a different Java runtime. Java 9 is available um, on any boards, Raspberry Pi 2 and above. If you're using an older Raspberry Pi, you should use Java 8. So we changed some of the compiler um, commands used, the compiler command set used to improve performance but it only works on ARM version 7 and higher. If you have an ARM version 6 board, like a, an A, a B plus, um, Raspberry Pi Zero, use Java 8. And if you have an ARM version 5 board, one example of this is Lego Mindstorms. You should also use Java 8. But we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi 3. And the um, G1 garbage collector, um, works, but it's not supported. So use a synchronous garbage collector instead if you're on an embedded device. Um, the other gotcha is also JavaFX is not officially supported. You can use Swing, AWT, um, but Gluon supports JavaFX on mobile devices and also embedded. So um, you can run um, their software on JavaFX on Android devices on iOS. You can also run it on embedded devices um, like the Raspberry Pi. And one example, oh, and also they um, release Scene Builder, which is a good UI builder for building your JavaFX application. So, one example of an application which we showed at Java Day Tokyo and Oracle Code Tokyo is a coffee demo. So it's an IoT coffee demo which has three grinders hooked up on relays, um, a scale which is connected to the Raspberry Pi via serial, and um, a kettle which has a relay and also a temperature sensor using one wire protocol. And then a couple touch screens running a user interface written in JavaFX which lets you choose the type of coffee and also choose the strength of the coffee. So if you want to try this app, you can download it on your phone. Just scan this QR code and that'll let you download the application. It's called um, Code Lounge. Also this link works to store slash code lounge. And then the same UI which runs on Raspberry Pi also works on the phone so you can see what the UI looks like. 
when you press order here, it places an order and the order gets sent to the Oracle Cloud. It's a Java EE application written by um, a certain expert. And um, it's deployed to the Oracle Cloud bare metal service, so the second generation cloud. And then the Raspberry Pi has a Pi camera on it which can scan the QR code and then it runs the, um, the program. So that, that's a sharp corner there. You guys are not following instructions. Kubo, so sharp. <laughs> Is that one even worse? Uh, we'll see. You think that one will work? Okay, so um, the second technology example is the Carbide 3D router, which um, doesn't show up due to a PowerPoint error. This is, this is why we love Microsoft software. Die. PowerPoint. Oh, oh! What do you know? It's back. So, the second example is a 3D cutter, carbide 3D cutter. Um, it lets you cut shapes out of wood, me, um, plastic, and light metals like aluminum. Um, and it's a three-axis cutter, and it's it's um, for desktop use, so it's relatively quiet. So we had one of these at Oracle Code Tokyo, and then attendees could run a technology demo, which would cut shapes and then give you a, you know, a badge cut out of shapes, such as this little car here. Um, in Java 1, San Francisco, we had an artist, Mirja Wellman, from Germany, Deutsch, and she would um, cut out all of these different shapes uh, or take the attendee cutout shapes and then create a huge um, sculpture out of it from all the attendees. Um, the code for the CNC router is shown here. So it, the Raspberry Pi connects to the CNC router using G code. It sends G code commands and it connects over serial. So there's a USB over serial connection to the CNC router. Um, so you can see it's opening a COM port on um, TTY ACM0 at 115,200 baud. Here are some of the G code commands that initialize the CNC router. So you can see that um, all of the commands um, are, you know, letters and numbers. And there's a specific format for all these, which I'll show you an example of. Um, basically, this takes the spindle and it measures the length using this little tool here on the edge and calculates the offset from this to the work plane. So whenever you start up the machine, you have to calibrate the, the distance of the tool to the work plane offset. Um, and that way, it will always cut um, exactly the same position. Um, this is the pseudocode for cutting out the um, attendee shapes. So you can see here it sets units to millimeters, sets the spindle speed to 9,000 rotations per minute. Um, then it goes in a loop and it um, moves the spindle through the different curve which you've drawn on your phone to cut out exactly the, um, the shape you specified. Um, and then the way it sends the commands is using universal G code sender. So this is an open source library. And what this does is from, you know, any Java application you can run on desktop, you can run on Raspberry Pi. It sends the commands over serial to an attached um, device using G code and Gerbil. Um, so you can, you know, scan this if you want to try it on your phone. And then here's an example of a cutout. What, what's this guy? Who's this? Duke. Very good. Okay, so I think 
I think you deserve a sticker. We haven't been giving out enough stickers. Okay, so because because you know Duke, you you get a Duke. And probably everyone else it wants a sticker too. Does everyone else want a Duke? Yes. Okay. So we have a small Duke for everyone else. Here we go. Give some small Dukes out. Okay, and the um, the last demo, and we're going to try this out with the track which we've designed, is a line follower constructed using the make block construction software. So here's here's the guy, yeah. And um, this guy is constructed using some parts from the MakeBlock Starter Robotics Kit. MakeBlock is a company in Hong Kong, which um, they do different um, kits you can build together with extruded aluminum, so it's very, very sturdy. Um, their kits are designed for Arduino, so they give you these Arduino shields, but I adapted it using the RP600 to fit on the Raspberry Pi. So we can use a Raspberry Pi as the controller rather than Arduino. Um, and the source code running on this is um, pi for j which is a Java library for doing um, IOT stuff. So pi for j is a good way of doing different IOT projects. It's written by Robert Savage. Um, this is how you get different digital pins and then you can check the state of them if they're high or low. And the line follower algorithm is very simple. So it checks the left and the right sensor. If they're, if they're both C white, then we know that we're um, lost. You know, we should have a line to follow. So it just goes the same way it was going previously. If you um, see both of them are on black, then that's good. We're on the line, so we go forward. If you have black and white, left is black, right is white. Then which way do you want to turn? Uh, left, right? Because if, right, if your right sensor has white, that means you're off the line. So you want to turn left and get back on the line. And if your left sensor is um, white and your right sensor is black, you want to turn right. So there you go. So you go back to the line again. So very simple. And hopefully... Hopefully it works. So we should try a demo. Where's my cameraman? So I need to use my computer on duty. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna um, connect to the Raspberry Pi first. Let's see let's see if we have more success than we had in Kumamoto. He was not having a good day. Um, Oh, oh, so okay, we can ping him. So we're already doing better <laughs> than Kumamoto. Uh, let's see if we can do SSH. Uh, okay, so we're connected to the Raspberry Pi. And then you can see all my mess here, but we're going to go... See what version of Java we're running. Okay, so you can see that we're running an early access version of Java 9 on the Raspberry Pi, and we're, we're connected wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi over there. Um, so everything, everything we're doing is remotely on the Raspberry Pi. And you see, so you can tell because JShell's not that fast when it's running on a slow Raspberry Pi. But uh, how how's that? Okay, so we can say hello, Fukuoka. Okay, so the Raspberry Pi says hello, Fukuoka. All right, and that's it for JShell. Let's open a real IDE. Okay, so we're gonna go to NetBeans. Um, 
How many folks have used NetBeans for their Raspberry Pi projects? Anybody? So NetBeans, NetBeans is now an Apache project. And it's very good for doing remote execution. You can just set up a new Java platform. Um, you do add platform, remote Java standard edition. Give it a new name. OK, so we'll name it after our current event. Host name, username, password. Um, remote JRE path, that's a little trickier. You have to figure out what directory you're in, and then maybe, maybe that'll work. Okay, so let's try. So this should, if it works, it should create a new Java runtime, and whenever we run our program, it will execute remotely on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so it worked. Um, the last thing to do is you probably want to set an exec prefix of sudo. That way, if you're using like Pi4j, you can get access directly to GPIO pins. And um, we're going to modify our project. To use the new runtime we just created. Oh, Fukuoka. Okay, so now we're using the Fukuoka Jug platform that we just created. Okay, so should we give it a try? Um, so the way this works is um, you guys should stand up and get closer so you can see the track. Our, our cameramen should work on getting a good shot, relatively. And um, I'll, I'll run it, and hopefully make it here before he moves. OK, so we have the, the program running. So this, this has a few features. One is a safety feature. So whenever he gets near an obstacle, he stops. Um, so on the front here is a um, distance sensor. And so from the Java code, we're um, detecting how far something is. So it's about, you know, maybe, what is that, 15 centimeters? And it will stop. Um, and also we have the sensors here for the line. So if I had something white, we could see, yeah. So you see it changes direction whenever it sees the sensors because it thinks it's on or off the line. OK, so where do we start for the track? Where's the beginning of the track? Does it matter? Maybe go that way? OK. And Takashi, you have a very important job. What? You, you are the obstacle. <laughs> so you have to pick a place in the track and stand there and block it with your foot. Okay. Yeah. And the, the sensor is the, off the ground by about six inches. So it will see your leg. It won't see your toe. All right. Let's try. And go. OK, so, so far so good. Oh, 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 made it. Uh-oh. We have an obstacle. Oh, no. Oh, safe. OK, so Takashi, you, you are, you're saved. <laughs> now you have to get off before you get run over. <laughs> oh, oh, it made that corner. And cameraman. You're the next obstacle, OK. All right, so who, who made the track? Kubo, who's who else? All right, so 
Give these guys a round of applause. Excellent work. So um, hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Are you, are you killing it? Just let it go. I'll, get, I'll catch it. Let it go. Oh, here we go. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about some stuff you can do with Raspberry Pi and Java. Um, so this is one of the examples from the book, Programming the Internet of Things, Raspberry Pi with Java. Um, so this is the project we did this year, last year. Does anyone who was here last year remember this project? Can you describe the project? And it's, uh, Japanese is okay. <laughs> Mario, <laughs> very good. <laughs> yeah, so this is a Nintendo emulator, um, NES emulator, or F Famicom, Famicom emulator. Um, and it's a 3D printed enclosure, and it runs on a Raspberry Pi. So it uses the half NES emulator, um, and you can run any um, NES or Famicom ROM, ROM on it. Um, and all the buttons and things are, you know, attached via GPIO. So this is the final project in the book. This is an earlier project. Um, this one is a magic hat that has an RFID sensor, and it reads cards. And the last one is a coffee, a simplified coffee demo. Um, but it's designed with little projects, so you can try it yourself, and it's, it's not too hard to, uh, to do the different projects. So um, thanks, everybody, for attending the Oracle Code Japan Tour session here in Fukuoka. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed the presentations by myself and Sebastian and Takashi and Kubota. Um, and um, we hope to see you next year. So thank you. Arigato.